Let's talk about isometric exercise real quick. We know that it's a type of strength training that involves contracting the muscles without any movement. Usually people think of isometric exercise as like lame or wall sits or like that type of exercise that we use for beginners just starting out or if you're in a like rehab and uh, it really has no other type of benefit outside of those realms um, and that, that is just simply untrue. So what it is is essentially we're holding a position or we're pushing or pulling against an immovable object, yielding or overcoming. It can be a useful tool for improved muscle strength and endurance and it can be incorporated into a variety of fitness routines as we have demonstrated on the channel many times before. And yes, it is possible to increase muscle strength and power through isometric exercise without necessarily increasing muscle size or mass. And I know that a lot of people say mass moves mass. And while that is true, I like to give the analogy of the truck and the car. So I've broken this analogy down before. Before we continue, I want to make sure that we really understand this analogy. We have two vehicles going down the highway. They're both doing 60 miles an hour. One is a tractor trailer, over 10,000 pounds, sometimes upwards of 50,000 pounds. And we have a car, which is anywhere between 2,000 to 4,000 pounds, okay? They're both going at 60 miles an hour. There is an unfortunate animal that just happens to, let's say it's a deer, walk inside, wait until these vehicles come in front of them to walk inside. Not, not when it's free, they're going to walk in front of the vehicles. In scenario A, when it hits the car, it just goes flying and does a whole ton ton of flips and then sadly the deer has just lost its life and uh, it's, it's, it is quite dead. It's mangled, but it's dead. In scenario B, when the 50,000 pound truck hits it, there is no physical form left, it's mush. Do you see, and, and that's just physics. Do you see what I'm saying? One has both the same speed, but one has inflicted massive damage to the object. Going back into it now. Isometric exercises can help to increase the force generating capacity of muscles, which can lead to improved strength and power. However, it is important to note that the extent to which isometric exercise can increase muscle strength and power will depend on a variety of factors like genetics, diet, training intensity, and volume, and overall health and well-being. We know that Bruce Lee was all about, dude, the dude ate, breathed, and slept training. That's all he did. When he wasn't strength training, he was doing isometrics. When he wasn't isometric training, he was doing stretching. When he wasn't stretching, he was doing cardio. When he wasn't doing that, he was researching. When he wasn't researching, he was eating the healthiest of foods. There were no kinks in that man's armor. So not only do you have someone that regimented, and think about it, how many people are that regimented? Even I'm not that regimented. Not that my physique is like insane. It's good, but it's not insane. There were no gaps with him, none. His whole body was just like granite. So it makes sense that with his martial arts training, you throw that technique into this type of power, well then of course, yeah, the one inch punch, I mean, you're gonna launch people across the room, makes sense to me. Doesn't that make sense now, a little bit more sense now? So he was only 135 pounds. It's also important to note that muscle size and muscle strength are not necessarily directly related. It's possible for a person to have relatively large muscles that are not particularly strong, or to have smaller muscles that are very strong. I want to drop this real quick because at the time of this recording, I am training my legs for hypertrophy. My legs really haven't been that big over the course of my lifting career. And that's because I've always trained in that strength rep range. Every now and then I'll throw like some three sets of 10 stuff in there, but I've always been in like that six or less. I really wanted them to be powerful. I was kind of chasing the whole Rock Lee thing and just wanted to be, you know, really, I want really powerful legs. So. A lot of the time, whenever I would load something up for legs, I mean, I was always attentive of what's going on around me. And, you know, sometimes I would get some smirks, you know, when I would load up the leg press and, you know, they would think that maybe I'm going for an ego lift and there's no way I could come all the way down and go back up. All right. But then like the smile, usually the smirks kind of went like this, you know, as they started to see me move the weight and they probably were just like, how that doesn't, that doesn't make sense that shouldn't be able to move that okay and that's just one scenario and i've focused on 
the leg extension and leg curl machines for many years now. I've been able to max them for many years because I've been training on the higher end of the force velocity curve. I've been focusing on strength, all right? So while I haven't had enough time under tension to stimulate a hypertrophic response, I've had more than enough tension to stimulate a strength response. Because for 13 years, as of this recording, I never stopped doing legs. I just did them differently in a way where we weren't really focusing on size. We were focusing on power, okay? So now, with how things are right now, I really want to focus more on hypertrophy. But I still do my iso chain work to really focus on keeping the power that I've worked on for the last decade or so. You know, I want to keep that. I really like having the power in my legs. I love that feeling of just driving from down deep, just boom. I love that power. I love it. It's part of why I love training, honestly. I, I love power, okay? But that's one, that's a scenario. And honestly, I think we've talked about this before on a couple other videos. You've probably seen somebody like that where there's like videos, I, th I think I saw a video of um, this guy trolling on YouTube in a gym and he had like 315 or 405 bench and he was only like 150, 160 pounds. I don't know. Google search it and see if you, you could um, see what I'm talking about. He's a younger guy. It's possible he's using fake plates, but you know, that's not always the case. And some people really are strong and they are just training at the higher end of that force velocity curve over time, we're gonna make those neural adaptations and we're just going to be more efficient at moving heavier weight and becoming powerful. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? It's a lot of tendon power involved. We're gonna go into tendon power in another video. I'm rambling, back onto it. So again, just because somebody's muscles are big, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're strong and vice versa. If someone's muscles are small, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're weak. The size and strength of them of the muscles can be influenced by different factors and it's possible to focus on increasing one without necessarily affecting the other um, and that's all about training on each end of the force velocity curve taking a muscle to failure but the load that we take the muscle to failure on is the determining factor here but the key factor to these adaptations either strength or hypertrophy is still taking the muscle to failure just what load are we taking it to failure? am i making sense here overall isometric training is a very very powerful tool for increasing muscle strength and power but still even with this in mind the extent to which it can do so is still going to depend on a variety of factors um, it's important for individuals to work with someone who's either a qualified trainer or a fitness professional to develop that a training program that is appropriate to their specific needs or goals. So if they're trying to become powerful and not really that big, then you need a program that's designed for that. And it's, it's gonna be a lot of neurological work and a lot of strength reps. So one to three or one to four repetitions, I would personally, tell someone to start with at least two reps, okay? So you don't wanna just do one rep maxes all the time. But if you're looking for size, then you probably wanna stay away from this, okay? And focus on that eight to 12 rep range for hypertrophy. But the key still is if you want the best strength adaptations, you want the best strength, you still have to take your muscle to failure. If you want hypertrophy, you still have to take your muscle to failure. The difference is in the load. All right, guys, what are your thoughts? Do we understand how this works? Do we understand how you can become powerful without necessarily increasing your size? That's why the ISO chain is so freaking good. All right, guys, comment down below. Thanks for watching. If you found value in this, be sure to drop a like. And if you're not yet part of the squad, hit the subscribe button. Come join the squad with us. See you next video. Peace.